Tony Ioli, Geezer Butler, and Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath. We knew we had to deliver an album, and we just let it go, you know. I mean, Rick Rubin was a big help. He had a, he had a game plan on what he wanted us to be like. And so that was a plus on our side as well, you know. We really enjoyed doing what we did, you know, writing the album. It was really good fun, and and that, it just sort of just flowed along really easy. It was really good. You know, it's a, it's a really monumental thing to be able to, at our age, and be, still be alive to be able to do it. So I don't know, I dropped it. <laughs> uh, when you guys were 20, 30, 40, uh, rock and roll was made of, uh, uh, we, we used to say sex, drugs, and fame if you had a chance to have a break, but being 65 today, what does it mean for you guys being a rock and roll star? We survived. <laughs> yeah, it's different now. It's uh, hot chocolate, vitamins, and go to bed early. <laughs> walk, walk in the dark around the fucking block every night. <laughs> I'm, I'm now at the age of 65. I'm really enjoying my, my work, you know. It, that's that's a highlight of my day. to do a great show every day. Whereas before, I'd have to snort this and smoke this and wonder if I'd wake up the following morning. But now it's great, you know. That was when he was 64, he was like that. Now he's 65. <laughs> you know? yeah. We don't get stoned, we don't get drunk, we don't get smoke cigarettes, we don't do it. We just stay higher now and have a good show, you know. What do you guys do for fun? Masturbate. And know each other. No, no. Quiet, quiet. Over here, geezer. Where? Over here. Oh, yeah. um, it's all right, I was just sleep. It's okay. Um, you're my favorite bass player, hands down. Um, I'm mine. Yeah, and, and Aussies. I wanted to ask you, um, you know, when you started playing bass, you had such a, um, a, a unique bass playing style. Who influenced you to play like to play Jack like Bruce. That? Jack Bruce? Yeah. I used to go and see The Cream, and he was, I never even thought about bass players until I went, oh, I used to go and, because I'd heard about Eric Clapton, I'd see The Cream, and Jack Bruce just totally blew me away. The stuff that he did on bass. Any young guys playing bass now that you look at and go, wow, I can see where I might have shaped their style? Besides Scott Reeder, of course. No. <laughs> Nobody? No. Thanks. I think with bass players, it seems like they've lost the art of, of actual playing, you know. Agreed. A lot of just one note wonders and where geese will play a lot of different stuff and bend the strings and make it really powerful. A lot of bass players from the last so many years have been just just playing the notes as such, you know. They don't actually do any nice movements and feeling for it. That's my ten penny worth anyway. I've always said that as long as we've got an audience, and as long as the people want to see us and we enjoy playing, I'll carry on. But if, if I wouldn't dwindle down to a nightclub in a back room somewhere, just because I want, uh, I just say call it a day. But you know, what, what's the, people say, when you get to 60, people start to say, the word retirement comes into every interview you do. And what, it's not a job, I don't have to get up and line up in a taxi room to get to a lot of factories or work. It's a, it's a, it's a well, I love music, I love my lifestyle. Uh, and as long as people want to hear me do my stuff, then fine. I mean, I had no idea what, in, in, 19, in 1969 that we made our first album, I'd be sitting there 45 years later. That was, I, I thought two albums, three albums, go back to the factory. But it, it's amazing what our life can be surprising. The album 13 was number one in 13 countries around the world. It sold millions of albums across the planet. Um, you got gold awards for in five different countries and platinum in four. And today, Universal Music Canada is pleased to present you with your fifth platinum award for the album 13. Congratulations. Thank you, Canada. Thank you very much.